chapter for this course, the optimization chapter. It's a really important chapter, as I told you last class, it's uh, because mostly your question number three from the final is coming from this part. So maybe your question coming at the final, at the final exam is going to ask you about golden section search optimization or quadratic interpolation optimization or Newton methods. This is under classified one dimension unconstrained optimization. Or maybe your question is going to be coming at the uh, constraint optimization, which is linear programming. So we are going to cover all these methods, uh, but we are going to give it uh, in two classes. So this class, I'm going just only to explain the golden section search, quadratic interpolation, and Newton's methods. Next class, I, I will explain the last method, which is the linear programming. So at the end of this chapter, you will be able to use or to identify and outline the, the methods of optimization to solve unconstrained, unconstrained optimization problem, which is, this is what I'm going to explain today, unconstrained optimization problem. And for the next class, you are going to be able to identify the methods that will be helped to solve for constraint optimization problem. So we are going to be exposed to both of these type of problems. Today we will just only concentrate on the unconstrained optimization problem. So actually it's what's optimization before we start. Actually here is new. Uh, we already have done done something like optimization during week uh, three and week four when we are trying to find the roots of the equation. So roots and the roots of the equation and optimization, they are in somehow uh, same techniques. Uh, some of the methods also, also you are going to use it is exactly the same like Newton methods. Uh, the, there's a difference between them. So root findings, we are trying to find the value of X that make your function is equal to zero. This is what you say about the root findings. So uh, optimizations, we are trying to find the value of x that can give you a maximum value of a function or a minimum value of a function. So both of them, they are trying to look for x values. Okay, so root findings is searching for the zero of the function. This is the difference between root finding and optimization. That root finding is trying to find the value of the zero. Optimization is trying to find the minimum value or trying to find the maximum value of a function. Okay, so this is the difference between them and it's really fundamental. But the way of, we are going to apply some methods and somehow is the same. So this figure here is going to be explaining about the finding the roots of the equation and also finding the optimization. So when we are talking about finding the roots of the equation, so since this value here is equal to zero, so this is considered the root. This value here is zero, so it's the root. And also this one.
Sorry about that. It's I'm not sure what uh, where we stop. Can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, uh, did I stop here or the previous slide? Yeah. I stopped at this slide. Okay. Okay, so I, I will explain it again. Maybe some of you didn't hear it before. Okay, so finding the roots of the equation and optimization, as I said, they are similar to each other. Finding the roots of the equation, we are interested is that it's equal to zero. So, say for one, the answer here would be equal to zero. So this is root finding. So we are interested to find these values for the root. But for optimization, the question is asking you to maximize are interested to find this point which is this point by the value of x here so which is this is your target here of x that it's maximized or maybe the question will ask you to find what's the value of x here that's it's give you the minimum of the function so this is what we are going to try to do today with the method. Trying to find giving you the minimum or giving you the of the function. So this mathematical background, uh, this is the class. This is the what you call it is the programming problems. Okay, so I'm not going to explain it today. Uh, just generally, we are trying here to find the value x that minimizes or maximizing the function subject to some connect. So we are not talking about the Something like this. Okay, let's say that, and this is the x axis here. So the peaks here, this is considered a maximum value, and this one also is considered a maximum value and this is considered as a maximum value. This value here is considered minimum. This is also a minimum, and this one, and this one. So what's the difference between local and global? Uh, the highest peak, this is what we call it, it's the global. Same like goes in here, this is considered global. So, why we are saying is there will be a local because sometimes you are having a function in this form there will be multiple patterns of peaks uh, we call this one is a local peaks what we are interested here to find we are not interested to find 
these local values. We want to be interested to find the global values. So we want to find this value and we want to find this value. So this is what we call it here. Both local and global optima can occur. So this is for the most cases, but actually we are just only interested in finding the absolute highest or lowest value of the function. So we need to find the maximum highest and also the maximum min uh, the global minimum or the highest minimum value for the function. So we are not interested to find these values. Okay, is it clear till here? Any question? Okay, why we are saying that we need to find the absolute highest value because here we are not unconstrained to any conditions. Because the problem now we are solving here is under unconstrained. So we are not interested. We need to find the highest values because we are not constrained to any limits or to any conditions. That's why we are calling this one in this one dimension constraint optimization. Okay, but now is the problem is, you are going to ask a question. Uh, if I'm trying to solve, how I will know that this value is the global or this value is a local? So this is what we are going to uh, use our method today to teach us how to find the absolute highest value. So, how do we are going to distinguish the global optimum from the local one? Uh, the easy if you are using a graph, same like we are seeing here. Using a graph here, it's really easy to find where is the global and local maximum, right? So I can find that this value here is a global. This is a local value. So by graph, to gain insight into the behavior of the function. Uh, the other one, which is our methods today, it's going to be in somehow same like find equation. Using randomly generated starting value, you can see from we are starting values like x level and also the bracketing methods of finding the roots of the equation. Or by generating starting guesses, actually you are not going to generate the value of initial values is given in the end. And uh, if you are going to compare the value, we are going to ask a question if the function of x2 greater than the function of x1 then x2, then you are going to do this many times. So preparing and the starts point to C. Routine retains better points. So this again, you are again your result. Is it better than the previous one? So to check, like let's let's say that you are finding this value. In iteration, you find this value. So you are checking this value. It's better than this value. So you are going to take this. So how we are going to uh, before we start to the methods? Just only to tell you that, that there is uh, some classification of the optimization in one dimension. It can be divided into bracketing and open methods. So since we are saying today we are going to cover three methods. The bracketing methods is the golden section and the quadratic methods. This is under brackets. So this means you are going to have the initial values more than one. So here you are going to have two initial value, x lower and x upper. Here you are going to have three initial values. Okay. Newton methods is considered as an open methods. You just only have one single, one single initial value. Okay. Uh, if some of you still remember uh, the first time I'm starting the the course I told you that it's the faculty they are trying to apply something we call it it's critical engineering thinkings so uh, question number three in the final is considered is the CPS critical problem so uh, we are not going to ask you directly to choose 
which method you are going to solve. So the question will not ask you, uh, use golden section search to solve the optimization problem. The name of the methods, it's not going to be given in the question. So you need to think how you are going to choose the correct method to solve the question. So in this case, you need to look into the initial values. So as I said, if the question is giving you two initial values, so that's mean you need to solve it using golden section. If the question is giving you three initial values like x0, x1, x2, so you need to solve using the quadratic methods. If the question just only giving you, and didn't mention that this is open methods or practice methods, but it give you one initial value of xi, so that's mean you need to solve using a Newton methods. Am I clear? Any question about this part? No, sir. Okay. Okay, so remember that is golden section, it has two initial values. It's going to be x lower and x upper. Quadratic methods, it will come up with x0, x1, and x2. Newton methods, it will be came up with x0, or what we call it here is it's so now let's see first it's the bracketing methods Julian first we are going to talk about the golden section search methods okay so before I start with the golden section search there is a we are going to use the golden ratio number so what's this golden ratio number it's showing it up here uh so if you read this box from the textbook you are going to see uh, what does it mean on one and why they are using this uh, number which is this is the value that we are going to use it they are saying that it's in many cultures the certain numbers are described uh, the qualities like for example some some uh, culture they are believe in lucky number seven and friday 13th but the ancient Greeks, they believe in this number as the divine number. So they are you, they are calling this number is the golden ratio. So we are going to use this golden ratio number to help us to find the optimization of the problem. So this is the number and it's came up from this equation here. So we are going to use this value to help us to find another values of x1 and x2. So if you have a time, let's go for page 358 the box 13 and read about the history of this number and why we are going to use it here so we are using this number here okay so the golden section search this is considered is a unimodal function which is going to be have a single maximum or a minimum in the given interval so you are going to have a function, that function is going to be have the maximum value or a minimum value within the interval. So what's your first step here to solve? The first step here is you need to pick up two initial values, x lower and x upper. Actually, you are not going to guess the values of x lower and x upper is going to be given in the question. So you are not picking up by yourself. So since we are saying that these values it's a, or these methods is under bracketing methods, so these values in between them, they will be the value of the maximum or the minimum. So that will bracket the maximum points of the function. Between x lower and x upper, there will be a value of x that is maximized or minimized the function. So your next step, you need to create uh, two interval points which is x1 and x2 but how you are going to create x1 and x2 based on these three equations in here first you are going to create a value of d using the golden search 
then you can create the value of x1 and x2. So x1 is equal to x lower plus d, and x2 is equal to x upper minus d. Okay, there is also another things in here. Most of the time when you are going to complete the first iteration, when the question asking you, you are going to have x lower will be here, and x upper it's going to be here. So when you are going to create x1, x1 is going to be at this position. time once you created the values of x2 and x1 your next thing is what you need to find here you need to find the function of x1 and the function of x2 so now here you are going to make the decision so what's the decision if the function of x1 it's greater than the function of x2 so then the domain of x to the left of x2 from x lower to x2 can be eliminated because it doesn't contain the maximum so then x will become the new value of x lower for the next round then you are checking for the next uh, uh, for the coming uh, okay it could be if the function of x2 is greater than the function of x1. So the domain of x to the right of x1 from x lower 1 to x upper would have been eliminated in the case. x1 will become the new value of x upper. Of course, you don't understand what I'm saying. But what he's saying here, for this case in here, let's say that if x1 is greater than the function of x2, so let's say that here you are having here the it's it's written in here if the function of x1 is greater than the function of x2 the value of x r that means it's the extra points is supposed to be here you can see that this is x this is x lower this is x2 and this is x1 and this is x upper you can see that it's the extremum points it's between x2 and x1 and x1 so it's mean the optimization or the maximum value it's not at this area so it's mean i don't want to see this space again i want to eliminate it how i eliminate it x x lower will take the value of x2 and x2 will take the value of x1 and x upper will remain the same I know what I'm saying now is not clear, but when we are going to do the example, I will make it more clear with you, and you are going to do the example with me also for some iterations, okay? But it's this is what I want you to remember, and you can write the root by yourself. Uh, step three, you are going to repeat until the maximum point it's going to be fine. So, the new x is going to be determined, and you are going to repeat till you are going to meet the tolerance value of error. So this means when the question is coming, you need to calculate the uh, the error. How to calculate the error? There is a specific functions to find the error for the for the optimization problem. I'm going to show it to you, but when we are going to do the example. Okay, so now I am going to make the example with you. But let's see it first here at the at the textbook. I want you to write it down, write the function. Okay. So this is our example in the textbook, 360 using the golden search section. Use the golden section search to find the maximum of this function. Write the function. 
within the interval of x lower is equal to 0 and x upper is equal to 4. This is the function that we are going to use. I don't want uh, I don't want you to look at the I don't want you to look at the answer because I want you to do some iterations by yourself. If you didn't do the iteration by yourself, so this means you don't understand how is the method is work. Well, just only write a function and write the values of in initials. X lower is equal to zero and X upper is equal to four. Okay, done. Yeah. Okay, so now let's start. We are having uh, this table. We are going to create the table like that. And remember, I told you that it's x lower is coming first, x2 it's coming second, x1 it's coming third, and x upper it's coming fourth. So this is the sequence. one, x lower, x2, x1, x upper, most of the time like this. Don't put x1 in here and x2 is here. You are going to get yourself confused. Okay. Uh, and you make one column for the function because we are going to use the function. Okay. So the first thing, you need to calculate the value based on the uh, golden ratio which is this equation here. So I need to get the value of 0 0.6, something like that. So using this equation. So first, you're going to calculate the value of D. Why I'm going to calculate the value of D for the golden ratio? Because this value here, it will help me to find X1 and X2. So first thing, find the value of D. So it's going to be 2.4721. Once I find the value of D, so I, now I can calculate the value of x1 and x2. So x1 is equal to x lower, which is 0 plus 2.427. So this means x1 will be equal to 2.4721. Okay. x2 will be equal to x upper minus d. So x upper is 4 minus the value of d. So 2.471. So the answer of x2 will equal 1.5279. Okay, so now I found my four points. So now I can just simply use the values of 0 to put in the functions in here. Okay, let me print screen this, this function. Okay, so now when x lower is equal to zero, so I will put zero here and zero for squared, and you see the value will be equal to zero. So when x is equal to 1.5279, so this function here will be equal to 
1.76. So when x1 is equal to 2.4271, so I put the values in here. So the function of x1 will equal to 0 0.63. When x is equal to 4, so I put 4 here, 2 sine 4 minus 4 square over 10. So the answer is equal to negative 3.11. Okay, so now, what now we are looking for? Iteration number one, it's already done, finished. So now, how I will go for the next iteration? For the next iteration, I need to look for these values here, as I told you. If the function of x1 is greater or less than the function of x2. So in my case in here, we are looking at function of x2 and the function of x1. So in my case in here, function x2 is 1.7. Function of x1 is 0 0.6. So that's mean in my case in here, function of x2 is greater than the function of x1. So what's supposed to be happen for the next iteration? x upper, x upper, it will take the value of x1. So x upper will take the value of x1 and x1 will take the value of x2 for the next iteration so x1 here for the next iteration will be equal to 1.5279 and x lower nothing will be happen it's just only going to remain the same so now what's the value is missing x2 is missing so i'm going to use these equations in here to find the new value of x2 okay so now i will go for the next iteration i need to calculate a new value of d based on the new parameters so the value of d is going to be the golden ratio value times x upper minus x lower so x upper now is changed it's not anymore is equal to 4 it's equal 2.4721 minus 0 times the golden ratio. So you're going to find a new value of D. So when I have the new value of D, now I can calculate the new value of X2 because X2 is the missing value. So it's equal to X upper 2.4721 minus the value of D. So I will get the new value of X2. So it's 0. 944. So let me highlight this one is as the highest value. Okay, so now I have all the values. So now I need to test those values against the function here. So when x is equal to 0, this function will return the answer is equal to 0. When x is equal to 0 0.94, this function will equal to 1.53 when x is equal to 1.5279 the answer will be equal to 1.7 when x is equal to 2.4721 so this function will be equal to the answer of 0 0.63 okay so now you need to make a comparison so the comparison between the function of x1 and the function of x2. So can you tell me who is larger now on who is which one is greater? Okay, so now in my case in here, the function of x1, it's greater than the function of x2. So let me highlight this. So now, if the function of x1 is greater than the function of x2, for the next iteration, what we need to do here, the changes is going to be happen starting from the area of x lower. So this means lower will take the value of x2 for the next iteration. And x2 will take the value of x1 for the next iteration. And x upper will remain the same. So who is missing here now? What's the value is missing?
x1 value so that's mean for the next for this iteration i will calculate a new value of d and i'm going to use this equation here to find a new value of x1 so i will calculate a new value of d so now it's x1 will be equal to x lower which is the new value 0 0.94 plus the value of d 0 0.94 here to get a new value of x1 so it's 1.88 once i done and now i need to calculate the values of the functions okay till this part so now you have two options for when x when the function of x2 greater than the function of x1 i solve it and also i solve when the function of x1 is greater than the function of x2 i want you to just only to go for these two iteration or let's say to iteration number five and show me the answer and compare your answer with the textbook or with me but try to do it by yourself without looking at the answer from the textbook because i want you to try the method by itself later i'm going to explain to you how to find the x optima and how to calculate the error but please try to make it for two three iterations i will give you a time I'm going to give you about 15 minutes to do that. So at, at 9 o'clock, I'll back to you. If you have any questions, please, please do ask.
Okay, have you gone for two iteration at least? How many iterations you've done? Anyone of you finish to iteration at least? Do you need more time? Yes.
you can see from my screen here that this is the rule that is for golden section. If the function of x1 is greater than the function of x2, so x lower will take x2, x2 will take x1, x upper will remain the same, and you need to find the new value of x1 by calculating a new value of t. If the function of x2 is greater than the function of x1, x upper will take x1, x1 will take x2, x lower will x be to the same, and x2 you need to be calculating using a new value of t. So this is the the rules is how, how to find. Can take screenshot of this. Okay, have you done at least two iterations? Have you done at least two iterations? Yes. Okay, so let me go with the two iterations that you have solved and see what's the results coming out. Then I'm going to explain to you what's the x optima and how to find the error. So when you are going to get the answer of the function of x lower when x is 0.9, so you get the answer of 1.5 and when x is equal to 1.5 so the function will equal to 1.76 and this is the values of the functions in here so at this iteration number three what we can notice in here that it's function of x2 it's 1.76 and the function of x1 it's 1.5 so that's mean function of x2 it's greater than the function of x1 so in this case x upper is going to take the value of x1 x1 will take the value of x2 and x lower will remain the same and the only one value is missing now is x2 you need to find the new value of d then you can calculate a new value of x2 so in this case for iteration number three, this is the answer here. Okay, remember what I said in here? For this iteration, it's function of x2, it's greater than the function of x1. So this means what's the value of x that make the iteration its maximum? Is it x2 or x1? which value of x that is maximize this iteration here? x2. x2, good. So that means this value of x2 for this iteration, it's considered my x optimal. The meaning of the x optimal, it's the x that it's maximized my function. If my function here is maximized, it's going to be maximized when x is equal to 1.5279. So if we go now backward here for the second iteration, what's the x optimal? Is it x1 or x2? If I go for the second iteration, What's my x option? Uh, x1. x1 or x2? x1. x1 is considered my x optimal because here is the function of x1. It's greater than the function of x2. So that means my x optimal here is x1. Perfect. 
So a sand goes in here for the first iteration, for the first iteration here, that it's x2 is considered my x optimal. Okay, so now let's try to find the x optimal for this fourth iteration. So first you need to find the values of the function first. And once you find them, then you are going to look at iteration number four for iteration number four what we can notice in here that the function of x1 it's greater than the function of x2 so if the function of x1 greater than the function for x2 so that's mean for the next iteration x lower will remain the same x2 will take the value of x1 and x upper will remain the same x1 is missing so we need to find a new value of d to calculate the new value of x1 so now when we back in here, so that's mean this is my x optima here. So my x optima again is x1. So you are going to continue the same to calculate. For each time, because you don't know when you are going to stop, there is two ways to know how you are going to stop when you are using the golden sections. First, if the question is asking you to calculate the error. So how to calculate the error? The error here is not the same like you are calculating the roots of the equation or the relative error. There's a specific equations to calculate the error for the, for the golden section. This is the equation. One minus R. R actually is the golden ratio number, which is equal to 0 0.61803. It's equal to this number. Okay, so this is the value of R. This is the R value. So it's going to be 1 minus 0 0.61803 times x upper minus x lower. So in my case in here for the first iteration, x upper is 4, x lower is 0. My x optima for the first iteration it's 1.5279 so the answer it's 100 okay you go for the second iteration 1 minus r it's 1 1 minus that constant value x upper it's 2.427 and x lower is equal to 0 over the x optima 1.5279 this is the error so you can see that it's reducing so you are going to continue calculating the error. And let's see what's going to be next for the all the iterations. Here I'm going to get the function for these values. Okay, so when I get the function for the iteration number five, so consider here the function of x2, it's greater than the function of x1. So this means the next changes is going to be here. If the function of x2 is greater, so this means x upper is going to take the value of x1. x1 will take the value of x2. And x lower is going to remain the same. I need to calculate a new value of x2 by calculating a new value of xd first. So this is xd and this is x2 again you are going to find the function for but here you need to find the x optima x optima again here is x2 and calculate the error it's 14 percent find the values of the function and look at the values in here i get the answer of 1.77 for, for x2 and 1.76 for x1 so still function of x2 it's greater than the function of x1 so again x upper will take the value of x1 x1 will take the value of x2 x1 will remain the same i need to calculate a new value of d to find a new value of x2 so my x optima here it's x2 you can see now the values is change a little bit it's 1.44 so now you can find now, we already start to find our global maximum. 
from here to here from this iteration to this iteration we already found the local the local maximum but because we are iterating a lot of time so now we start to find another value is better which is the global maximum so that's why is the, the values start to change calculate the error it's reduced again you are going to try to find the values of the function so for the seven iteration but you can see from here the function of x1 it's greater than the function of x2 so this is my x optima is for x1 and you can calculate the error it's 5.9 then you go for the next situation here x1 will take the, the value x low will take the value of x2, x2 will take the value of x1, and x upper will remain the same, and find a new value of d, to find a new value of x1, and find the values in here. So your x optimum. Okay. So if the question is asking you, you need to iterate till the answer is less than 5%. So in my case in here, my error is 3. So the scene, the x or the maximum value, you are going to get when the answer of function is equal to 1.77 when x is equal to 1.44. The maximum value of the function you are going to get is 1.77 when x is equal to 1.44 okay so this is the way of how you are going to do that and you need to write these statements if you write these statements in the final exam you are getting about like one or two marks don't forget to mention that that is the x that is maximize your function it's 1.44 it's maximize my function by the value of 1.77 okay is it clear now Yes. Any question? Um, so can I refer back to the constant value R2? Okay, it's in the textbook here. Okay. Okay, thank you, sir. Okay, there's another thing. When we are looking here, this example is asking you to solve to find the maximum right the example here is asking you to find the maximum right yes so now most of the time x optimum here that you are choosing it's the x that it's maximizing the function so how about if this example is asking you to find the minimum what's the x optimum is going to be here let's say for first iteration what's the x optimum if this example is asking you to find the minimum of the function is going to be x1 so it's going to be 2.4721 so it's going to be this value is consider my x optimum and you are going to continue the same so this means you are going next iteration you are going to take these values of 0 0.9 as in your x optimum and this value as in your x optimum okay so you can see now the difference between the maximum and the minimum okay but the technique is is, is exactly the same okay so uh, this is the class for the for the golden section if you have any questions please do ask if not then we can move to the next method any question
golden section. Okay. The second method is the quadratic interpolation. It's really easy. Uh, but as I told you, it's the difference between the golden section. Golden section, it start with two initial value. Quadratic interpolation is start with three initial values, which is x0, x1, and x2. And in between them, because these are practicing methods, uh, the, uh, let's see here. You are having here, it's, um, you are having here is x0, x1, and x2. Between them is going to be the the maximum or minimum value. So this mean it's going to be between x0 or x1 or between x1 to x2. So how we are going to find that? To find the value of the, uh, the maximum or minimum using the quadratic interpolations, you have the three initial values. You are going to calculate the next point. So I need to calculate x3. x3 most of the time, whether it's going to be here or it's going to be here. So if the function of x3 is greater than the function of x1, so x1 will be equal to x3, x0 will be equal to x1 to discard the value of x0. If the function of x3 is greater than the function of x1, so x2 will be equal to x3. Uh, then you are going to repeat based on the error is going to be provided. Uh, telling you the truth, for me even, I don't understand this. And uh, I think it's wrong, something wrong in there. Even if you read it from the textbook, it's not clear. For me, I just believe on, you must observe on which side that x3 is false. What does it mean? Let's see it here. Let's say that is uh, I'm making the calculation, and now it's x3, which is actually supposed to be x3. It's the x optimum. X3 now, if I calculate it, supposed to be x3 is my x optimum. So x3 is fall up here. So if x3 is fall up here, so this means there is no way that is the maximum is going to be here. Or let's say is your our function something like that so it's mean for sure that it's my x3 here this is the highest this is the maximum so it's mean i no need to find next iteration i no need to find it between x2 and x1 so i need to eliminate this area how i'm going to eliminate this area to eliminate it it's really easy what you're going to do is x2 will take the value of x1 so this is going to be your x2 for the next iteration x1 will take the value of x3 so this is going to be your x1 and x0 will remain the same okay so that's mean for the next iteration this x2 will be gone so here so this one is going to be your x2 and this is going to be your x1 for the next iteration. So now let's say that it's you, you are calculating the value of x3 again and x3 it's fall up somewhere here. So this means I no need to search between x0 and x1 here again, right? So this means I need to keep up this, so I need to delete this one. So how to do it? So 
x0, we'll take the value of x1. So this is going to be your x0. And x1 will take the value of x3. So this is going to be your x1. And x2 will remain the same. So you have already x0, x1, and x2. So this means for the next iteration, this one is going to be your x0. This one will be gone. This one is going to be your x0. And this one is going to be your x1. And this is the value of x2. Okay, I will do this one with the I will do this one with the exercise or with the example. Then we are going to see how it's going to be looks like. Okay, is it clear? Any question before I start? Any question? Okay, so this is our example. We are going to follow the same the same equation, the same function from the previous, but we are going to have this initial value. X zero is equal to zero. So this means here zero. And x one is equal to one. So this one, let's say this one is equal to one. And x two is equal to four. So this is your x0, this is x1, and this is x2, okay? Uh, what we are going to do here, this is the problem. x0 is equal to 0, x1 is equal to 1, and x2 is equal to 4. The first step. We are going to start with the three initial guesses. Okay, x0, x1, and x2. It's already given here. Okay, second step, we need to calculate the new x3 points. How to calculate the new x3 points using this equation? I know it's a long equation, but we need to calculate using this equation. So we need to find x0, uh, the function of x0, and x1 square minus x2 square plus the function of x1 times x2 square minus x0 square plus the function of x2 and all. So we need to find this point. So once you find this point, what you're going to find again here, it's when x is equal to zero, the function will be equal to zero. When x is equal to one, the function will be equal to 1.5829. When x is equal to, when x2 is equal to four, the function for x2 will be equal to negative 3.14. So you are going to use these values. You're going to use all these values inside this equation. So calculate the new value of x3. So now x3 is 1.505. 1.505 is where, actually? So if this is my initial, 0, 1, and 4. So 1.5 is supposed to be somewhere here, right? is here so this means I no need to calculate again the value from 0 to 1 so when we are looking here that when x3 is equal to 1.5 so it's between x1 and x2 so that's mean for the next iteration I need to eliminate this element from here So the lower guess is going to be discarded. Therefore, for the next iteration, x0 will be equal to 1. So this means x0 will be equal to 1. And x1 will be equal to x3, which is 1.5. And x2 will remain the same. So x0 is equal to 1. x1 is equal to 1.5. And x2 is equal to 4. Graphically, 
So that's mean. Uh, let me delete this. This one is going to be deleted. This is going to be your x1, x0, and this is going to be your x1, and this is going to be your x2. Okay. Then you go for the second iteration. So for the second iteration, you're going to find a function for all these values. You will put all these values you will put all these values inside this equation here to find a new value of x3. So now x3 is 1.4. So now let's see it graphically how it looks like. x0 is equal to 1 and x1 is equal to 1.5 and x2 and my answer here for x3 is equal to 1.4 so it's somewhere here 1.4 so this means for the next iteration i don't want to have four anymore so this means this one is going to be my x2 and this is going to be my x1 and this is going to be my x0 for the next iteration you can see it from here i have those values and x3 now it's between here so this mean i don't want this one anymore you delete it so this is going to be your x2 this is going to be your x1 and this is going to be your x0 then you go for the third iteration okay so this is the way how to solve that one and this is the answer the final answer for it okay so now Remember that is we are saying that is x3 here is supposed to be is our x optimum. If the question is asking you to calculate the error, if the question is asking you to calculate the, the error, so the error will be ea is equal to x3 new minus x3 old over x3 new so this is how to calculate the error if they are asking about the percentage if the question didn't ask you about the percentage what you are going to notice here the more you are going to iterate the more you are going to get the same exact value no changes so the more you are going to iterate you are going to find it's the function is not changing the values you are getting the same exact values so you will reach to one stage that it's that the answer will not change so within the five iteration the results is converging rapidly on the true value which is 1.7757 at x is equal to 1.4 so it's converge with this value of function when x is equal to 1.4275 okay so I want you to try to do the, the example. If you have any questions, please do ask. And this example also you can find it on the textbook here. Thirteen point two. Okay, I just want you to go with the one iteration, two iterations only, or three iterations. I will give you a time of like ten minutes to try. Then we go for the last method. If you have any questions, please do ask. Any questions about it? Is it clear how to do that? Any question? No question. Okay, so try to do the, the example. And also, if you don't have that much time to do it now, we have it, you can have it on the on the textbook. Then I can go with you for the for the last method, which is Newton methods. Newton methods actually is not something new. We already have done it uh, using the 
finding the roots of the equation. Even you can look at the equation looks the same. Find the value of xi plus one is equal to x minus the function first derivative over the second derivative. Then you read it, and this is an open bracket. So it's an open method. Sorry. So just try to do the example here for one iteration or two iteration. If you have any question, please do ask. Okay. Uh, Another thing I want to tell you uh, here for the U future, I am going to create a class forum for optimization. I'm going to create a new forum for optimization and I am going to upload these files. So I'm going to upload this file so it's for you as a reference. And also there is some videos about the optimization also I'm going to upload it so you can refer back to them anytime. Just try to do the first iteration and second iteration.
Okay, any question about the quadratic? Is it clear? Any question before I move to the last method for today? No question. Okay, so last method for today is the open methods using the Newton methods. And somehow it's similar approach for the Newton Raphson methods. So what we can find here, we can use it to find the optimum of the function by defining a new function of gx with the first derivative. Uh, this is because the same optimum value with uh, getting the value of x star, which is considered the x optimum as five fourth of the first derivative of the function, and the function itself will be equal to zero. So we can follow the same techniques to find for the external of the function. So the methods is really simple, same like finding the roots of the equation. But here we are going to start with one initial value. So the question is coming for the newton raphson for optimization. Remember, that is going to be just only using one single initial value of xi. So we need to calculate the new uh, iteration points or the next iteration point using this equation in here. So xi plus 1 will be equal to x, the initial or the old, minus the first derivative of the function over the second derivative of the function. Then you are going to calculate the error. x new minus x old over x new, and you see that it's the error is going to be reduced, so this means you already found the, the optimum value. So you are going to repeat the same steps until the external point is found within the specific tolerance value of error. So each time you find a new value of x, you need to calculate the error. So in somehow same exactly like we are talking about the, what you call it, is the finding the roots of the equation. So this method is not something new. So let's see do this. Okay, so we are having our function, we are going to use Newton methods to find the x maximum points. This is the function. Our initial value of x is equal to 0 0.25. And this is how the first derivative and second derivative of the function. Okay. So let's, let me show it to you here in Excel. It's more easier. So remember is the equation is This is the equation how to find. Okay. So when x is equal to 0 0.25, so the first derivative of the function will be equal to the value of negative 2.10. And the second derivative of the function will be equal to negative 1.3. So this means the new value of x at the first iteration will be equal to what? 2.5 minus negative 2.10 over negative 1.39. So the answer will be equal to 0 0.99 then of course you can calculate the error new value minus the old value of, over the new value you can get i want to by yourself try to try to find the answer of the second iteration
Okay, so now at the second iteration, what's the coming value is going to be here. If x is equal to 0 0.99, what's the new value of xi plus 1? Minimize this and put this here. What's the new value of x? Anybody? Uh, 1.46901. Perfect. Okay. So you find the two values of the first derivative and second derivative, and for the second iteration, you are going to get 1.46096901. So that's mean you can calculate the error, new value minus the old value over the new value. Then again, you are going to find the values of the function to find what's the new value for the third iteration. So you're going to continue like, like this. Okay. At the end, you are going to see that uh, the more time that you are going to iterate, the more time that it's the value is not going to be changed. 
as you can see from here 1.42755 is going to be stuck to it but most of the time is the question when it's coming they are going to ask you to stop at the, the value of the tolerance error so though if the question is asking for the tolerance error so this means you need to calculate the approximate error so that's all for the bracketing methods using the optimization if you have any questions please do ask as I told you, I'm going to upload some materials here for, for, the, for the forum if you want to refer back to what I did. And also I'm going to give you the some uh, documents also for the next class. But as I hear now, I want to check with you. It, uh, I hear that it's next Tuesday, it's... Uh, I'm not sure it's for what. So our next lab, we don't have a lab actually because you didn't finish the, the optimization chapter. So can I give you the last class on the next lab or you want to go for the next week, then we extend for one week and then you find the, the replacement class. Or I can just simply use the next lab as a class. Or you want to find the replacement class for the next week. Okay, so this means your your lab is going to be on Friday, right? Or on on Thursday? Class is on Friday. So, okay, so Thursday, Friday, I give you the constraint optimization. So I, I finished this topic with you. Are you okay with that, all of you? Yes, okay. Yes, sir. So I will finish this topic on Thursday and Friday. So next Tuesday is going to be your duty. Uh, the lab of how to do the optimization using Microsoft Excel, I'm going to explain on the lab next week, normally. After that, we consider we already finished the, the course. Uh, we will give you the assignment two on week 13. Uh, if you want to have any specific class need to repeat on week 13, you can just simply text me or text in the group and I can make you a replacement class for a topics that you want to repeat back again. Okay, as I told you, I already saved from your time one week. So that week, even though we are not having a classes, but if you want to review back or you want me to explain anything, you just WhatsApp me, then you can go online to explain about any short topics that you want. Are you satisfied? Are you okay, all of you? Yes, sir. Okay, so that's all for the class today. I will see you, inshallah, for the next class on the lab session. Uh, before you leave, yes, only for the attendance, your name and student ID and the group. Thank you very much. Take care, all. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Bye. Take care. Thank you, doctor. Welcome. Thank you, doctor. Bye. Bye. Take care.